I just watched the latest TED talk from Al Gore. And yeah, the fact that struck me the most is that the World Economic Forum found that climate change is the number one risk for our global economy. And he concluded that we're facing actually a moral challenge. And every local community needs to act to address this challenge. So the question I want to discuss with you tonight is how can San Francisco become self-sustaining? And yet to fill all the electricity needs of San Francisco, we need around 1.3 gigawatts. And I actually realized there's not a lot of space for wind and solar power because San Francisco is entirely surrounded by the ocean. But the ocean also comes with a lot of great resources. And people definitely found ways how to have fun with ocean waves. But I want to show you today how we can use ocean waves to power homes and cities and even fulfill our freshwater needs. And if we look at the global world map of uh, wave power, we can see San Francisco is actually one of the best locations for wave power. And on top of that, the resource has three main advantages. It's 30 times more power dense than wind power, so less land is required. It's less variable, so it's available day and night time. And um, it's more predictable. In fact, we know up to two weeks in advance how the resource would look like, other than wind and solar, which can change in the order of seconds, which is a very big challenge for the utilities. So we have this huge underutilized resource with this added benefits. But yet yeah, the industry um, of wave power is still compared to the industry of wind energy a decade ago, where many different technologies were investigated till then eventually the three blade upwind design emerged as a standard. But for wave power, we don't have such a solution yet. And in a search for new solutions, Professor Lam from UC Berkeley was investigating a certain mud floor. We can see here on the left side, yeah, the waves travel to shore till they entirely break. Whereas here on the right side, we can see there's this muddy region and the waves suddenly disappear. So what happens here is as the waves travel over the mud, the mud vibrates and similar to shock absorber, extracts all the energy. And then Professor Lam had the great idea, we can actually use the same principle to generate power. And I've been always passionate about renewable energies and started looking into new solutions since high school. And then when I first read about the concept, I saw the huge advantage of a system that can operate submerged, invisible, and survivable at the same time. And so we started building first prototypes. Um, the first one actually with a bike pump from another professor we still want to give credit to. And then eventually, um, yeah, led to this design where you can see, similar to the mud floor, as the waves travel over this membrane, the membrane starts interacting with the wave, and then we can bundle all the energy and the generators underneath, um, and that can actually be used to produce power. And then we improved this design, and here you can see quite a steep wave is coming in, and in the back of the tank we have nearly um, yeah, wave cancellation. And after that, even people approached us and said this could be used for shore erosion. And so now we started looking into how would a full-scale system look like. So we can see there is a floating version for offshore, but another one that's closer to shore. And as the waves travel over, we extract the energy and then could bring it to shore to produce electricity or also to produce desalination. So to summarize, the three main advantages of our technology is that it's more survivable because we're submerged. And that's actually one of the biggest challenges of the industry so far, is that on the surface, um, yeah, anything is exposed to the extreme events of winter storms. So the fact that we can yeah, dive away from these extreme events um, is a huge advantage. The second is a higher power output because we're using our patent absorption principle. And the last one is, yeah, we're causing no visual pollution. That means we can be really close to the load centers other than offshore wind that has to go um, very far out to not um, yeah, disturb the landscape. And because of the state of the industry, the Department of Energy announced last year the US Wave Energy Prize. And our team, together with 92 other teams, applied. And then the judges, um, after yeah, reviewing all the concepts and technical details, then invited the best 20 teams for tank testing. And that was already a great moment for our team um, yeah, when we did the tank testing in January here, a short time lapse of our testing. Um, and then the judges took another look at the results of this tank testing and of our simulation data and yeah, the costs of the actual full system. And then this March, they finally announced the nine finalists and that was a very exciting day for our team um, yeah, when we got the great news that we're actually selected to be among the nine finalists. And on top of that, we actually got the highest score among these nine. So now we're very excited yeah, to... Um... Thanks. Yeah, now we're working on a, um, a bigger prototype um, that we actually have to submit in a couple of weeks and then will be tested in Washington, D.C. Um, in this fall. And at the same time, we're also looking into first ocean demonstration. So let's imagine we place one of our units over an ocean beach in San Francisco. 
one unit would produce enough power to power 180 homes in the city um, and would save us 1,000 barrel oil per year. And coming back to our initial question, yet to cover the entire electricity needs of San Francisco, around 33 miles of the California coastline are actually powerful enough to provide the entire power needs. But I think, um, yeah, similar to a good farmer, the future of a sustainable city lies in the utilization of all local available resources. So for San Francisco, this will be solar power, wind power, as well as wave power and other renewables. Yeah, and to close off with, um, yeah, I just watched a movie from uh, Josh Fox and one of the researchers there stated, um, yeah, to address the big challenge of climate change, we need something um, yeah, more advanced, we need more approaches. And, and he was referring to something called, um, he called moral imagination. And that's why we're very excited to be, um, and very grateful to be supported by the Cycleton Road Program as part of the National Lab, um, as well as UC Berkeley and our industry partners, because they all yeah, built the framework and the resources to make that possible. And I think for San Francisco, actually, this challenge can also be a big opportunity to become yeah, a global lighthouse of a fully sustainable um, yeah, city of the 21st century. And at the same time, yeah, I also selected the picture uh, to give you an idea how the landscape would look like actually after our device is deployed. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you.